I'm Cristina González Castro, a Nordic Walking Instructor since 2006, a National Trainer for England Spain, and an independent researcher. I hold university degrees in sport, health and exercise science and in radiotherapy and oncology, as well as postgraduate studies in applied positive psychology and coaching psychology. This is a brief talk on Nordic walking. I will first contextualize the topic and after a brief introduction, I will focus on the potential advantages of this discipline. I hope you enjoy it. Every story has a beginning. Nordic walking started to take form in the 1930s in Finland, where cross-country skiers started using their poles during training sessions with no snow. Outside the sporting field, the first documented initiative is that of Lena Haskelainen, a physical exercise teacher, also in Finland, that started to use cross-country skiing poles with her students. This was in the 1960s, and it is said that she stated this will be the sport of the future. Well, I don't know how she feels now, but the sport has indeed experienced great growth. The first international organization that was set to promote Nordic walking was the now known as International Nordic Walking Federation. It was created in Finland in the year 2000 as a result of the collaboration between the Finnish Central Association for Recreational Sports and Outdoor Activities, the Sports Institute at Vierumaki, and the sporting brand Excel, who was brave enough to give a green light to creating the first specifically designed Nordic walking poles at the end of the 1990s. The discipline was named Nordic walking and it began spreading quite quickly. Twenty years later, INWA still exists, but there are many organizations promoting Nordic walking across the globe. Also, a lot of different brands today sell Nordic walking poles and accessories. So this was a brief contextualization regarding the institutional origin of the sport, which of course is, in, is important because otherwise it would have been impossible to make it global as it is today. But what is the reason for this success? Well, there are several factors that make Nordic walking stand out when compared to other sports. Probably one of the most important ones is that Nordic walking is a cross-cutting activity. And why am I saying this? Because on the one side, it can be practiced throughout the whole life cycle by, and by any person with different physical condition. So as long as you can walk, you can Nordic walk. In this figure, you can see a photo with my dad and his grandchildren all practicing Nordic walking. Also, I have highlighted the different facilitative environments in which Nordic walking can be implemented. So the family setting, as is shown in the photograph, but Nordic walking is also very easy to implement in the education, the social, the work environment and the healthcare setting. There are a load of different examples and initiatives in this sense all around the world. Actually, Nordic walking is gaining importance in the healthcare setting because there is a growing interest in research and although it is still early days because it is a very young sport, results from the scientific evidence are really promising. And Nordic walking is actually being used as part of rehabilitation programs in different countries. This is a list of different pathologies in which there has been scientific research published. My field of expertise is in exercise and cancer and I have produced some scientific work in this area to try to promote the benefits of Nordic walking in the oncology field. And of course, as many other instructors, I have been many years working with Nordic walking and cancer patients with great success. Also, and it is not in the list in the slide because it is not a pathology, but there has been growing interest in researching the benefits of Nordic walking in older adults, and the, result, and the results are really exciting. But the healthcare setting is not the only one experiencing great growth in the, in the Nordic walking world. Also, sporting events such as races and challenges are looming in the last years. And I'm not only talking about popular events, but also high, high performance in sport. And it is, as I say, a field that is expanding. Of course, the actual COVID pandemic has forced a halt. But with this, as with everything else, we will come back. Okay, so 
Nordic walking is a very versatile activity because it can be adapted to, dif di to different goals. A merely recreational goal, a fitness goal, where we're talking about structured and regular sessions here. Um, I already mentioned how important it is uh, becoming in the healthcare setting and finally in sports performance. Okay, so after that brief introduction, let's go into what Nordic walking is. There are three questions that I always answer, even if I'm not asked. <laughs> the first one is why? Why Nordic walking? Why should I Nordic walk? Well, to use the upper body in a more active way. The second question is what for? Well, to help us in our forward movement while we walk. And Nordic walking helps us, one, providing stability, and two, actually helping us with forward motion as we push through the poles. Knowing the what I want a whole body workout and the what for help with forward motion will make the third and final question, the how, easier to understand. So all we need to do is add Nordic walking poles to a natural way of walking. Nordic walking technique is actually adding a pair of specifically designed poles to a natural way of walking. Once we have gained this, we will improve our technique if we wish and therefore we will improve our walking pattern. So remember that to begin with, it is not about altering our walking pattern in order to use the poles, but to add the poles to a natural walking. So it is important to maintain good joint alignment and good biomechanics in order to avoid potential injury. We have to remember that after all, Nordic walking is a repetitive movement and we take hundreds of steps every time we go for a Nordic walk. So how do we add the use of Nordic walking poles to a walking? As I just stated, we involve the upper body in our movement forward and we achieve this pushing through the poles. This is actually what differentiates and defines Nordic walking from other pole walking activities. So as you can see in the two photographs on the left, the poles are held in a vertical position in front of the body. When used in this position, they can help us with stabilization purposes. However, if we were to push through them, the force would take us upwards. So we don't push through them, we just use them for support. In Nordic walking, on the contrary, as you can see in the two photographs on the right, we place the poles in a diagonal. This is because we want to actively involve our upper body in a forward movement. So obviously, pushing down and backwards will help us with forward motion. Regarding the poles, although they are very similar to trekking poles, Nordic walking poles have some specific characteristics. Perhaps the most important one are the straps. As you can see in the slide, Nordic walking straps allow us to open our hands without losing the poles. So the straps are attached to our wrists. And Nordic walking straps must allow both to open our hand and also to transfer force through the strap. The other thing that you might have probably noticed is that the pads are designed in a different way to traditional trekking pads. This is because of the angle at which the Nordic walking pole will be used and of course to optimize the traction of the pole on the ground. So these rubber, pa rubber pads are actually used in hard surfaces and help with the push. There are nowadays loads of different brands manufacturing poles. I'm not going to dwell on this, but I do want to highlight that the quality of the poles can be especially important if you have um, any type of injury in your upper ex extremity, so wrists, elbows, shoulders, etc. Because we do need to remember that Nordic walking is a repetitive activity and the pole is a vibrating element. So the less vibration, the better, in order to avoid injury risk. And this is usually um, good quality poles, the ones that uh, vibrate less. Good, I'm going to carry on now with the advantages of Nordic walking. In the year 2013, I wrote an article that was published in the European Journal of Lymphology and Related Problems. In this article, I highlighted the advantages of Nordic walking in patients with primary or secondary lymphedema. However, these advantages can be easily extrapolated to the general public. 
as it was published some years ago, I'm going to update what I wrote in, in it, okay? So, as you can see, I divided the potential advantages in three blocks, physiological, psychosocial and implementation advantages. Let's start with the physiological advantages. By the way, the ones in bold are those which probably stand out more when compared with other types of aerobic exercise. And it is important to acknowledge that Nordic walking combines all these advantages. Okay, so it is a whole body exercise because we train all the main muscle chains in our bodies. And as we have seen, we combine the effort of our lower and upper body. Also, some studies have shown improvements in posture, and I'm sure that if you are a Nordic walker, you will, uh, exper you will have experienced this yourself. It is pretty straightforward. If we use the poles in a vertical position in front of us, we are likely to lean over them. However, in Nordic walking, the poles lie in a diagonal behind us, so it would be really odd to lean forward when we're pushing backwards. Since the very first scientific studies back in the year 2000, Nordic walking has shown improvement in cardiopulmonary capacity, blood pressure, maximum uh, heart rate, oxygen consumption and also energy expenditure. Also, several studies have shown an increase in the muscular activity and strength in the upper body. This is also something to be expected because we are pushing through the poles. The evidence has also shown that proper Nordic walking technique improves circulation of both blood and lymph, which is the fluid that runs through our lymphatic system. And this is why it is very important for lymphedema patients or those at risk of this disease to open and close their hands. Um, this was... Uh, studied in a paper that was published in 2016 by my colleague Andrea Di Blasio et al. So it is really important that in order to gain um, benefits from lymphatic return, we use an appropriate technique and we do open and close our hands. I'm not going to dwell on here um, either, but uh, if you're interested in this topic, you will find more information in my website. And just lastly, to note that Nordic walking is a low-impact activity, although this will be subject to the intensity of our Nordic walking practice. But at regular speed, it does reduce the impact in the joints of our lower body. Okay, let's now go with the psychosocial advantages. As we have seen, we share the effort between the lower and the upper body, so perceived exertion, this is how tired we feel, is lower than walking at the same speed with no poles. And this is because we have um, an extra engine. So our upper body is working now. And we don't really use it in such an active way when we free walk. This is why if we Nordic walk, we will be able to walk further than with no poles. And this is very interesting because it will help us to motivate those with low exercising rates. Research has found that although Nordic walking involves greater muscle activation and intensity, the muscle coordination pattern is not more complex than that in free walking. Remember that the natural walking pattern is the basis for Nordic walking. These two advantages, low perceive, perceived exertion and ease of learning, contribute alongside with the social aspect of Nordic walking to create good adherence rates. This is, it is easy to engage with the activity on a regular basis. This is really important because adherence is a major problem in exercise prescription. And as with other types of aerobic exercise, it can reduce stress, anxiety and depression symptoms as well as improve self-esteem and the quality of life. Of course, all these potential advantages are subject to a regular, safe and effective practice. That is why learning the basic technique from a physical activity health or healthcare professional that is also specialized in Nordic walking would be the ideal, as they would be able to individualize the session to the needs of each person. So, implementation advantages. This is very interesting in all settings. However, 
it has special significance in the healthcare setting because nothing is usually cheap in the healthcare setting. And this is a very economic intervention that can result in great savings to the national health systems because a healthy population will need fewer healthcare resources. Okay, I think I have covered all the topics I wanted to talk about. To finish up, this is a screenshot of my website, research4nw.com. It is a research database on Nordic walking. And although it is in Spanish, you have a Google Translator tool where you can choose your own language. So to conclude, I will briefly summarize the most important aspects. Nordic walking is a whole body exercise. We work all our main muscle chains. However, and as we are sharing the effort between the upper and the lower body, the perceived exertion is lower than walking at the same speed with no poles. We have seen that this, along with the social component, make it easy to exercise on a regular basis, so easy adherence. And although it is an easy to learn activity because it is based on a natural walking pattern, it is advisable to learn with a qualified instructor. So my personal advice is to start adding the poles to a natural way of walking and then take it from here to improve our gait and to reach whichever goals we have set for ourselves. That is all. Thank you very much for listening. You may reach me at research4nw.com and you can also follow me in the Nordic Walking Podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>